very special guest today. We have um, a world traveler, uh, Pavel Horbokoni. And so I will be honest with you, um, this webinar is uh, sort of my selfish project. I follow several people uh, on social media who travel the world. And Pavel is one of those most unusual travelers uh, for several reasons. One, not only he travels to all kinds of places, what surprised me about him is that the places he goes to are often the places I've been to as well. But he somehow finds the si sides of those countries that I've never even thought they existed. Uh, he especially impressed me with his recent travel throughout Ukraine, the country where I grew up. And you would think that I know what kind of things exist in Ukraine. And yet he would go literally like an hour from where I grew up and he showed pictures of some sort of castles or, or I don't know, like cathedrals, like where, how, like how did I not see them growing up there? So that's very unusual. And so that's what we want to talk about today, uh, about his travels, but also in another, you know, another important question is, you know, for example, how do you organize your trips? You know, where do you get the funding, you know, to travel? Because you've been to many places, I don't know, maybe you want a lottery, but maybe there are some, you know, tricks and, and tips that maybe you can share with our students. Uh, the summer is upon us. Uh, many exculture students or friends of our project uh, will be traveling, and I suppose they can use some, you know, good advice from from a person who's been everywhere. And so I'll start with the first question. Um, so where have you been? How many countries have you visited? Uh, I have been to seventy-two countries. Two. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, not so so much. So some of my friends did, well, you know, one hundred and fifty. Um, but so anyway, continent or uh, what are the regions of the world that you visited? Uh, so mostly uh, it's Europe and Asia and the States. So it's uh, 72 countries in Europe, Euro Eurasia. So 71 and, and the States three times. I've been. Now, something like this takes time. So do you do it as a, you know, like for a living as a job or you have a job and you travel when you have little breaks between the projects. Okay, okay, so uh, I started traveling uh, really hard, let's say, that, that, that way, I, I travel now. Uh, I do travel now, I travel in Ukraine anyway. So you, even we have this COVID-19 situation, but we still, this was still possible to travel. So it just, uh, to, um, it, it, it just, we talk about scale. Sometimes you scale to the world, sometimes you scale to, to, your, to your region you are in right now. You are stuck in those things. Anyway, uh, how often, I usually travel twice a month, um, sometimes <laughs> less, sometimes. Well, twice a month, I usually go to you know, like my backyard twice a month, <laughs> you know, not international travel. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean I travel for a week or so. So, so um, in general, I for for a few uh, previous for a few years, I I have been traveling like uh, let's say ten, twelve times um, a year. Like it's not like travel one day travel. I don't count them. So that it just I I count them now because I I go every. Uh, bi-weekly somewhere in Ukraine because it's uh, there are a lot of places surprisingly even for me <laughs> there are a lot of places in Ukraine I, and and then finally I have time to, to to visit visit my local country which is good anyway um, yeah it it was I had two or more um, trips per per month so it it required some planning. Um, but it's not your main job, right? Like you have some. I do, I do, I do, I do have jobs. So let's let's just uh -huh. uh, so, so travel. So you're not like a like a traveling not my job. who makes money by by publishing stories about. No, 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 no. I I, I actually always pay for my uh, my travels. So I never, almost never, um, use some kind of people's money. No or, sponsorships or anything like that. I even don't have business trips right now. So the last business trip I had was to the States five years ago. So it was my last paid uh, trip I, I had probably. No, not really. It was another one was in Africa. 
sorry, I had a project in Africa. Uh, and so you traveled usually alone, or at least, you know, looking at your photos from the recent trips, like the Middle East and or much of Ukraine. So it seems like you just basically pack your backpack and, and you go on your own, right? It's not like there is like a group of people that you travel with. Uh, it depends. So I, for, for recent years, I traveled alone. So uh, in Ukraine, I don't, I don't travel alone. I, I, I travel with my girlfriend, friend. Uh, so she actually discovered, um, show, showed me a lot of places in Ukraine. So it's not my uh, achievement in, in, in Ukraine history. So, so I'm lucky I got the right person to tell me what exists so we can plan it. So uh, recently, but recently, yeah, I, I was solo traveler. For, for a couple of years. And it uh, gives me, it gave me a lot of um, good stuff. So when you are alone, you always can communicate with people, with someone. So you have to communicate and, and this point where the adventure begins. So when you start to, to speak to locals. Right. That that miracles comes and um, the the thing is I, I chose the region where for previous years my my um, my region was Middle East I just put a lot of um, let's say effort into it just so to get to every country I, I I can I can get to so I I've been to almost everywhere in Middle East uh, except talk Yemen. about that. So you, you, you came back from the Middle East apparently okay. a few months ago, right? Yeah. Just, just, just. You have the Lebanon flag in the background there, is it? Uh, this is Lebanon, yeah. uh, this is Oman, this is Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. and this is from Rwanda. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been to many of those places, you know, for conferences, for work, and so my travel was very different from your travel. I saw the airports, I saw the Hiltons and Hyatts, and I did take a couple of paid tours where they took me to the desert, you know, showed me a camel and brought me back in a, you know, in an SUV. Now your travel was very different. So like okay. you've gone to the same countries, but your pictures were way, way, way cooler, like really interesting stuff. So can you tell us about that trip? It seems like you spent there a few weeks, like it was a long trip, wasn't it? So tell us about the whole thing. Like how, why did you choose okay, it? Okay. Okay. I, um, I was thinking to go to um, Southeast Asia. And it was boring to just fly there. So, so I decided to take small jumps through, through different countries. And I started, started building my, um, my trip. So I, I was trying to find cheap tickets. So I, I, I traveled cheap, let's say, kind of cheap. And so that's important, we'll talk about that. Yep, many of our students don't have uh, money. It's, it doesn't mean I spent a lot of money to just, just Mm, I spent okay money, so I don't spend really a small amount of money. I don't, but I. So let's say I sometimes I sleep in in airports, sometimes I sleep in the car, sometimes I stay in hostels, but I, I stay with locals, uh, and sometimes I stay in good hotels. So it doesn't um, money is not concern, but it, it matters a lot. It it does matter. So uh, I started looking for, for a way to get to Southeast Asia and I found um, some kind of cheap ticket from Budapest to, to Oman, uh, to Dubai, sorry. I, I wanted to go to, to Dubai. After, after last year I went to Saudi Arabia, I wanted to go to Oman this year, uh, last, yeah, last year, last December. So I found the cheap, I, I started building the, the trip. Uh, I found a ticket for 19 euros from Budapest to Dubai. It was kind of crazy, crazy ticket sale. And it back 19 euros. Yeah, that, that's crazy. So it okay. <laughs> cost me much, much more. But it's now, you know, this uh, cheap, cheap tickets are just kind of triggers for me. So I start, I, I, I subscribe to many, many, many uh, different, uh, how do you call it? promotions and I just keep keep uh, loading <laughs> them in, in, in into my head so and and, and the one sometimes it click clicked and it just I realized I can build the, the my, my, my path using those uh, cheap options 
or whatever. So I, I bought ticket from Budapest to, to Dubai and start thinking how to go further to to the to, to east. So I thought originally thought just to take a bus to Oman. Then I found a ticket uh, Dubai Oman Mumbai, which was an open jaw ticket one way. It, what, it cost me one hundred twenty, I think, dollars. Then I found uh, from another coast of India, I found also cheap ticket to Kuala Lumpur. It's um, not actually to Bali for one 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 hundred. 40 maybe or something like that. So anyway, the whole trip co cost me like eight, 800 euros from Kiev to, to, to Bali, back and forth, which is kind of price you get, um, like um, easy get this price. But on my way, it was, it was uh, Budapest, it was Dubai, it was one week in a month, it um, was India, for 10 days, I crossed one coast to coast in, in, in India, then I went to Kuala Lumpur, and then I went to Bali. Uh, I had to return and I had to uh, try to refund my money to, for, for my way back because I had to return earlier uh, this year. So, um, so I, I kind of lost some money in it. So it, it, it's not a kind of thing it's that, um, well, you visited like what, like almost ten countries. I mean, like for eight hundred dollars, that's that's very, very good. It's not true, actually. Eight hundred dollars is just tickets. You know, you have to uh, to leave to stay somewhere. You... So uh, my way of traveling, um, I try to get a personal transportation. That's um, in most cases, it uh, gives the flexibility, the huge flexibility. You can go whatever you whenever you want. Ever, anywhere, anywhere, almost anywhere. And when you say transportation, you mean like rent a car or you mean something else? Rent a car, rent a motorbike. Um, if you can't, you, you can use public transportation, so it's still possible. But it's, uh, in my experience, it's twice or three times slower than having um, your personal transportation. And in my case, I, I love driving. That's the road, it's what uh, makes me happy. So I need the road itself, so I just uh, can drive whole week from one place to another place and, and be happy with it. So, but it depends on the country, so it's not always I can get it. So how um, do you then decide where to go? Like, I'm looking actually at your photos, maybe with your permission, I'll share some of them on the screen as you're talking. I, I could share some, some photos I have. Yeah, if you have some, yeah, if you can share some, but can you tell us, so, like, again, you find some interesting places in those countries, like, you definitely go off the, you know, given path. Of the grid. And it's just, I mean, like, how do you plan that? How does it work? I, the secret is, um, there are two things. First of all, I don't plan. <laughs> Not, I, I don't plan really hard. So I just, I have some points of interest in the country. Maybe you can share, share. You, you, you can share some photos and I'll show yeah, later. I'm trying to get your Middle East uh, trip here. So just to give a sense, so people kind of have an idea of what kind of um, uh, travel. So you go yeah. ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll share my screen and show the photos as you're talking about your travels. Okay, go ahead, please. So I'll, I'll just, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, but it's not Middle East. It, it's yeah, definitely yeah. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll get to that, so we'll, we'll get to it soon. Or let me, since we're talking about the Middle East, I'll scroll further down. So this yeah. is that's Europe somewhere, right? So yeah, this is Europe and Switzerland or something like that. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll share my screen then. To everyone, so like these are the kinds of places Powell visits. I, I don't even know how you find it. Like this seems to be abandoned fully. Some of them seem to be functional. Some of the photos, as I said, like from Dubai, like like where do you find that? I, I've been there several times and I've never seen anything like this. So this is Dubai, right? Or it's uh, one of those Middle East. No, that's not Dubai. That must be uh, Kuwait, probably. Yeah, Kuwait, yeah. So, but I mean, like, that's an interesting perspective. Like, most of the people will be walking among those skyscrapers. Somehow, is that on a roof of a house or? Like, yeah, it's, it's the roof of, of an abandoned house. So yeah. actually, I just um, I park my car. If it's city, I, sometimes I don't need a car. So I just explore. I just walk. I walk a lot. Let's just be clear on that I, I really I can walk 25 kilometers per day a few days in a row and it's 
to some extent it's hard but i, I love I, I like it so you walk you just walk and and see so and um in the middle east it's hard to 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 walk <laughs> yeah, it's hard it's, yeah. no, it's not really hot. It's, yeah, I it's hot. We were in, in Dubai a few years ago and there were like four or five of us and we decided to go to that, you know, indoor skiing place. And so we were staying at, I don't remember the name of the hotel, one of those five star in the downtown. And so we can see, I think Burj Khalifa, we wanted to go to Burj Khalifa. And it's like, you know, you can see it is like two kilometers away, so a 10 minute walk. And so we exit the hotel, walk like for 50 meters and like, ooh, no, 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 that's way too hot. It's like, like 48. So we walk back, call a cab. Like okay, there is, okay. we can there is seasoning. I, I'll tell you a secret. There is seasoning. In the winter, it's yeah, we okay. Were in July. Yeah, we were in July there. So never go to Dubai in July. Just check. <laughs> well, it was a conference time. So, but yeah, like you cannot spend much time outside in that kind of heat. So, um, yeah. Bahrain, yeah. So... Yeah, so uh, usually I have some feelings, let's call it six, sixth sense, <laughs> sort of. It's from experience. So I started to exploring um, surrounding area from a long time ago. And I just, uh, I just liked wandering. So I just, there is no goal to, uh, if you don't have a plan, you, you, um, you don't have a tunnel vision. You know, so if you follow someone's um, steps, it uh, you just follow follow them their path. You take their path. You 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 don't invent your own path. So you just dive into the city. So it's it's quite easy. Um, the most interesting stuff it usually is in the center of the city, main city. So you just start walking, start going everywhere you can. You just go. And you just walk, 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 walk until you find something. It doesn't mean it takes five minutes or, or so. It's, it takes, sometimes it takes days, but somehow I, I'm lucky to find those places. <laughs> um, I really don't know. So, so just, if you, if you don't have a real hard plan in your head that you have to visit this, 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 you can give up something but you can find also something else. So, and uh, unusual stuff, you can usually see from, um, from some dis distance. Or, um, for example, in, it was hard in Kuwait because it, 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 it's a big city, actually. And you just drive somewhere, you see the, some kind of old building, you just park your car, you just go to, go to the um, building place, it's closed somehow you just open the door enters then then people comes to you and tell you that you cannot be here but you already seen right. something interesting well i'm looking at some of the pictures from your ukrainian trip and it does look like some of these places i don't think they're open for public access no 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 this this place yeah this place you're looking at it's closed actually so i don't know so, how you got in did you break in or i talked to, no no here i talked to the owner I first, uh, you speak to locals, you find the owner, you talk to owner and, and you um, admit, uh, convince, convince her to open. Yes, it doesn't look like a place that you can just take a bus tour to. I like no, 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 no. <clears throat> yeah. Place, yeah, last places, especially in Ukraine. So yeah, and here you can take a bus, <laughs> yeah, not on the roof of the, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it, you have to, mm, you know, there, there are some enthusiasts who have those um, kind of database with those places and you just have to filter this database and decide if you can go. Uh, and sometimes on the, on, the spot, on the spot, you have to decide how to get in. So sometimes it's, it's impossible. So sometimes you just get in, sometimes you find someone who can open it. Sometimes you don't, so sometimes you fail. So it's not that, that easy to, Mm, it's not every point so it just be ready to abort your mission you know <laughs> can i ask you about this photo and i think I, I that's the one so i remember so you go to some of these interesting castles or, or churches or whatever they are in ukraine yes you post some of these photos and then the local authorities come and take down these paintings or yes. press or whatever they're called because all of a sudden your trip to the place attracts attention and after centuries of being abandoned, now all of a sudden they're worried that somebody will come and steal it or vandalize it. 
Like, what was the story with that? It almost seems like your travel changed how the local authorities look at the place. Was it the, that the case? I'm, I'm not pretty sure it's exactly my travel. So I, I, I was one of the travelers who found the spot. You know, we have some kind of closed groups mm -hmm. in, uh, in Facebook we, where we share information about those kind of places or someone posts somewhere. So you just have to be subscribed to many, many, many places and you collect it. It's not one day thing. So you just, uh, in background, you collect data. And then you analyze it, and then, then you go. Um, I didn't know about these places. I just want to <laughs> notice it again. So just I was lucky that I, I know the person who does know those places. My my mission here, there was get in in in, in some places. So you, you to convince the owner to open it, you know, <laughs> and somehow it worked. So you, you use it um, first. You you smile at people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you you should be really interested in the place itself. Uh, you just share stories that you are already been to many places like this and you just maybe show some pictures, um, tell about travels or whatever. So you just talk to people. And this is, I, I think this is, this is important. So you should like people first. If you don't like people, it's pretty hard to to convince them to help you. So we have quite a few people watching here, and I see we started getting some questions. But one question that many people ask me when I talk about world travel is, how can I do it? And so you said you travel sort of on the cheap side. like So you didn't win a lottery. You, you didn't sell a star. No. Like you don't have millions of dollars and you can do it, you know. I don't. And, yeah. so, so what advice would you give? Like, let's say, for example, there is a kid somewhere, I don't know, in, in Ukraine or Germany or, I don't know, uh, India or Pakistan who wants to see the world. So uh, what advice would you give to that kid who doesn't have much money? You know, maybe has some resources, right. but not really just, you know, buy air tickets anywhere and stay at the hotels. How can okay. you, like you've been to, you said, to 78 countries, you said, or 79 countries? 72. 72. So how, how can you do it? I mean, without spending millions of dollars, because each of these trips, I mean, I assume they would cost, you know, a lot of money if you did the conventional way. Uh, first of all, I want to say that your country worth visiting. I, I made kind of mistake not visiting Ukraine before, like, like I do now. So you can explore your country first. Uh, first, get, get some experience of traveling. So you understand what you can, um, um, how it works for you. Does it work at all for you? So just you don't have it um, over the globe trip, huge trip, just start and go, whatever. So it takes small, it's like baby steps. So you take small steps, understand uh, your local region, you can use, uh, start from, from, from your place. This is, um, I believe it's important. Also, just uh, subscribe and read uh, people who travel and try to get their mindset. So usually, um, it's not that expensive uh, as you may think. So when I had less money, I, tr I, I traveled not the same amount, but a reasonable amount of time. And I hitchhiked at, at some point in my life. Um, I didn't use couch surfing because it, at the time it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't there yet. Um, for now, it's um, the problem is I don't know how it's, the situation is gonna gonna um, gonna be next next year, uh, especially with the, this COVID nineteen situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but previously, you just subscribed to different, just try small trips. Like it's, it was kind of in, in at least in Europe, in in Asia, it was easy to to find some cheap tickets tickets and to buy uh, to to plan small trips just just few days it's it, it's not that hard you can find you can stay in hostels it's not a problem huge problem so you just start traveling and then and you get experience it's like like i don't know it's like everything in life you 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 start with simple things so it's not that hard you just need to understand what what you can do what you want to do what you like what you don't what you 
will just just that's it so and, you, you, i assume you kind of start with looking for the you know do you have a country in mind and then you plan that trip or you're just looking at where there is a good promotion yeah. like the, the thing is uh, the problem the, the, we have two 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 issues here uh one is if you have if you have to go to a specific place with a particular on a particular date it, it's expensive right. if you, if you, if it doesn't matter when you go and where you go it's it's much cheaper so just uh, not try to to plan like uh, um um, visit every country but in alphabetical order let's say or whatever every city just uh, see what you have what 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 kind of routes you have around you or available for you or whatever so and just uh, start to uh, watch watch them just you just need to watch and 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 uh, monitor this one and that's then you catch when you realize that you can afford it you take it you don't have to take the cheapest option so i i don't take cheapest option it's almost impossible it's it's easy in retrospective but it's hard it's almost impossible in um, in in real time so don't be um, like um don't don't get offended that you took the no not the cheapest option it's okay so that's and tickets sometimes it's not the most expenses you have so, so, so sometimes it's 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 very different um things sometimes preparation uh takes much more money than the trips itself so you try to get your gear prepare your car or whatever so it, it it takes a lot of money so just don't um second thing don't be you will never be ready that's the very important thing if you will be Mm. We'll try to be up absolutely ready. You, 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 you will, you, you fail. So it's just, you cannot go anywhere. So because I, uh, I have fear before my travels. So I have fears like uh, if there is nothing interesting in there, I'm going. I have no. Let's say in my case, I have no no plan, and maybe I cannot find anything. So I'll just be like. I'll go somewhere, I spend money, I spend time, and I just, I, I will get nothing. And it's okay, it, sometimes it happened too. So don't be um, afraid of failure. That's, that's also important. Um, dangerous, so we have a question here. Is it dangerous? Did you find yourself um, at any time in a situation where you were in danger? Some of the countries you go to, again, looking from, you know, the European or American perspective, you know, on the news, they're usually shown in connection to, you know, all kinds of violence. Okay, this is, this is really good, good, good question because, you know, um, I put myself into danger by uh, not safe, safely driving. I didn't drive safe in some cases, so this is danger I put myself in. But uh, talking to people, um, I would say I didn't see that really a lot of danger from, from people. Like, like muggers or kidnappers or, or, I don't know, just scammers, like nothing like that? Scammers, it's the most uh, usual. Uh, yeah, you can see scammers. Yeah, just try to be skeptical. <laughs> don't believe in it's okay if you um, there are two things so just it's it's better to trust people and at the same time not just be very um, sus sus suspected right mm. uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of paranoid you know uh, i watch for my wallet i watch for my bill uh, i don't leave my belongings somewhere i take it with with me so I always have my backpack with me. So I never, um, at least the most uh, valuable things I have with me, which also could be dangerous if someone wanna wanna rob me. Yeah. But but I never been to places like this. I don't know how. So I've been to many 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 countries, but 
Mm -hmm. So you I don't know. had your stuff stolen or you've never been mugged or, or you know, like never found yourself in a situation? I, I never been, no, I never been to, to such situations. Um, I was, it was in Ukraine actually, <laughs> in my home country. Uh, some, some stole my bicycle recently. Someone stole, stole my bicycle, so. Um, but 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 the important thing is you have to be ready to lose everything. That's that's important. So that's why you don't don't need to buy everything uh, the most expensive stuff to carry. So just just if you if you are not ready to lose what you have, it's better not to take it with you somehow. So you you should be ready. It's not easy. I, I don't say it's you have to uh, give it up easily or whatever so but uh, but but you need to so that's um, I don't know another question from the audience um, what was your most memorable trip and why okay okay memorable I'm looking at the countries here I mean I assume each of them is probably memorable in its own way but yeah it, yeah it, it, it's really hard to to choose to choose one but uh, one one of one of my probably memorable trips was okay. Um, I think I have chosen two or maybe three of them. <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, first one that I made. Uh, I went to Pamir Highway in Tajikistan on my own small car. Uh, the place where people go usually on trucks or motorcycles um i'll, I'll show i'll share my screen just to, to, to understand so you think the road is so bad that people don't drive there on cars you know uh no road actually road isn't that bad at all uh i'll just start, start disabled it's uh, let, disabled. Let, should be, let me see i think i can change your status to Okay. That, yeah, that there is some restriction. So, can so uh, long story short, I rebuilt my small uh, Volkswagen Polo car, the small car, into kind of I call it micro camper, and I slept in the car on the way. And I, I rode uh, twelve thousand kilometers uh, to altitudes as high as four thousand six hundred fifty-five meters uh, with that with that car, um, and. Um, and I and I went back, <laughs> which is important in my case. So here, the, uh, if you can see my screen, yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, so that's the road where you probably don't go faster than twenty kilometers per hour, right? Yeah, this is this is called Pamir Highway. It goes through highway. Um, oh, that's a fancy name for this <laughs> highway. <laughs> well, it is high because you know, like it's literally high. <laughs> so but, yeah. So in in, in Russian language is called tract tract it's not actually highways it's not but it's translated to english like pamir highway some some i guess in this case it would be from the word high altitude not high school. maybe maybe so um on the back here is afghanistan this is uh, the, the road itself is in tajikistan uh -huh. so you got to be careful there so we had a few hikers who got too close to the Iranian border a few years ago. First day it was scary, second day it was okay, and third day it, I was happy I was there because people were, were very, um, very kind. There are not, not, not so many people in there. <laughs> not many tourists. But, but here, let's say, uh, one bank you see Tajikistan, then um, next bank is, a, the bank is um, Afghanistan and Glacier is a Pakistan. <laughs> there are three countries in here huh. and here i found some hitchhikers close to this rock <laughs> they were they must be waiting there for like three days just to see if that exactly exactly three days exactly that's what they told me so <laughs> so it was fun they were they were really happy to see what country were they from poland oh. they were on the way to china so here the Cars usually used on the, on the on this highway. Yeah, that seems more appropriate. Uh, my, my one is the small Volkswagen Polo. <laughs> yeah. 
So I did this crazy road uh, on this small car and, um, and I actually uh, stayed in the car most of the time. So I, I slept. You didn't have any company at that trip? No, I, here I was alone. So this is, this is also Tajikistan. It's kind of black sand and Afghanistan. You can see Afghanistan. So let me look at this again. I mean, these are the places that would not be perceived as the safest places, you know, on the planet. Like you're going to like Afghanistan. Well, Tajikistan, really, you know, uh, you go alone go. so you're not afraid somebody's going to steal your car. Like if somebody kidnapped you there or stole your car, I'm not even sure you would have, you know, like proper authorities to go to and complain. I mean, like you would just manage. Nobody would even know, right? Okay, first of all, uh, this is Tajikistan, it's not Afghanistan. And this part of Afghanistan, it's kind of, uh, mm, it's, it's called Vahan Corridor. And it's more like Tajikistan than real Afghanistan uh -huh. first. Okay. So more uh, people, so you, if it's called Afghanistan, it doesn't mean it's, it's Kabul in there or what, what, other places. So I didn't go even to Afghanistan to just just so I, I thought to, to got visa and I could get to this place, take this road, but but I, I, I decided not to because it's not a safe, it, because, uh, not because of safety, but it's it's not kind of real Afghanistan, you know. I want to go to kind of real Afghanistan in my case here. It, it, it's kind of safe. I, I wouldn't say it's uh, so because it's different country. So it's the, um, probably I have a similar mentality with those guys because we had uh, um, some. It was ex USSR mm -hmm. at some point. So, but uh, it's not uh, that uh, dangerous. But frankly speaking, they the two guys were killed. Uh, prior three weeks, my trip there, but they were bike cyclists, and it was really hard to me uh, to, to to go there. Oh. I was monitoring, but I was um, let, let let's just say I, I don't ignore safety, you know. Right, right. It's uh, I I monitored many new news uh, feeds. And I read uh, what this, if situation changes, I will not. I will just go to Uzbekistan and not go to Tajikistan and, and just go back. And I have to um, give up my, my my kind of dream to go in, going here. So just don't get me wrong. I I, I just not the guy who craziest guy who just go. I I, I think a lot about safety, right. but um, most of the dangers we can hear from um, from newspapers are not real. You know. So you have to. We actually had a few students from Afghanistan in Exculture over the last few years, and uh, talking to them, it seems like you know the country is how should I put it? What we see on the news and what really is are two different things. And again, I'm still yeah. not sure if it would be just safe to just wander into a country, you know, and 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 do your thing. I guess you still need to do some preparation, but it's definitely not as bad as sometimes the media portrays it. People are probably, you know, most of them are, you know, friendly and nice and, you know. Uh, yeah, especially in the Middle East, they're really nice to you. This, I, <laughs> and I was had to fix something in there. There are nothing, not, not, no services like this. As you can see, it was the scary. This was the scariest moment for my car, probably. So I thought maybe I will. Mm, I broke my. Um, oh, so actually, I, I, lot of, I broke something in my car in, in this trip. So because it's not prepared for these roads. Yeah. So and um, it was fun to, to repair it on the, on the go. And here you, you, you can see altitude. Wow. That, that, that's the type of altitude where you start getting the check engine light. The changes in pressure go off. <laughs> yeah, that, I know, yeah. you know, every time I go into the mountains and we've done it enough, like in Canada or the Rockies here in the United States, and every time you get to some altitude, the uh, check light, you know. Um, in the I was lucky. Um, there was, was no uh, check engine light, but it, at the above 4,000 meters, it started driving. Mm, it, it's okay, but you have to play with, with, the, with the clutch. So it's, it's not that uh, powerful like... Uh, uh, like below, like zero <laughs> yeah. altitude. 
but, but it's okay. You're not getting enough oxygen, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's hard actually, it, it's probably harder for you than, than for the car, <laughs> because you, you don't have a, um, you have a fatigue, you know, very quickly. So you, you just walk and, and, and you think you just run for 15 minutes, but you did just one minute walk. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, yeah. it, it makes dif it's different. Uh, this is horsepower leaving my, just leaving my car. <laughs> you gotta be very careful, yeah, they can accidentally jump on the car or something. But, so this is, was my, my, my probably top, top one trip. Um, Where is it? What country is this? Um, it was trip to Tajikistan. Oh, the, here? Yeah. Or, or, what yes. What was this one? Uh, this is Petra. This is Petra in, in Jordan. Uh -huh, Jordan. Uh, no, it's not the second one. The, the top one I, I told you, this was trip to Tajikistan through Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, second one, let me, I forgot <laughs> what, what I chose. Just, just let me think. Uh, second one, probably so, my trip to Saudi Arabia because uh, people there were, were very kind and they were, very, they were very open to you. And they didn't, they didn't have a lot of tourists they know you as a as a person like not a person like like they see expats because many people work there but they don't uh, didn't have uh, until very recently they didn't have um, tourists as right. tourists at all. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah. So I'm also looking at your photos from the United States, uh, and I see you've been both uh, East Coast, West Coast, from what I see from Niagara and the California coast. What were your impressions about the United States? Uh, I, I love to travel there. So it's very beautiful. It's amazing. So I, I, I wish I could go more, <laughs> and I will at some point, I hope. Yeah, come and visit us. We live in the Appalachian Mountains. It's not as picturesque as the Rockies, but it's still, you know, interesting places. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple more questions uh, just to wrap it up. So one, so what's next? Uh, what's your next destination? Do you know where you want to go? Oh, it's very strange time for me because usually I have planned um, many, uh, many trips in, in the future. The, all, all of them were canceled due to the, the situation in the world. But now I don't have uh, hard plans. Mm, I'll, I'll continue to explore Ukraine uh, this summer, I think. Uh, there are a lot of places in Ukraine I haven't been, been to yet. So, and when um, everything that when the world is open, I'll go where it's possible to go, probably, <laughs> or it's reasonable in in uh, in terms of money to go. Yeah. Now, there is a question also about your ordeal with COVID nineteen. So, if I followed the you know the, the sequence correctly, you were somewhere in Europe, and you mm -hmm. had plans to go further west. Yeah, I, 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 I was on my way to Brazil. Yeah, and then you, you you had to return, and then somehow you got into the hospital. Like, what exactly happened there? Like, okay, so I at some point I I realized that it will be really hard to get back to Ukraine if they the, if Brazil looks look look. So you uh, were going to go to Brazil. I was on my way to Brazil. Yeah. Ah, so you were in Europe, but you were going to Latin America. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, and I planned the trip, uh, let's say, six, six months before or eight months. I found really nice, nice tickets, like 320 euros from Porto to Rio de Janeiro and, and back. So, which is, which is quite good. It was good at, at some time. <laughs> yeah, so, that's the photo. I, I don't even know what country that is, but somehow you ended oh, it's up. Ukraine. It's oh, Ukraine. So, you actually came back to Ukraine and then got into the hospital? Yes. So I was. Um, I, I heard about we that Ukraine locks down the borders, uh -huh. and I, I have three days to come back. 
So I canceled my trip to Brazil and I realized it will be really hard to get back after a few days. So I, I bought, um, the problem was it's, it was really hard. So I, when I realized I had to act fast because many people uh, will start buying tickets to get home. So I, I canceled every, everything I, I did at, at the time. So I just went uh, to the computer as fast as possible and started looking for the way, um, the, my way, way home. So I, I, I found a way to uh, fly to Budapest, Hungary, and there is a just border between Hungary and Ukraine. So I crossed the border on blah, blah car. And I went uh, and from, I got to, but I still ha had 800 kilometers to get to Kiev. So I went to Lviv uh, by hitchhiking and then I took a flight from Lviv to Kiev. So it was kind of mix. <laughs> and next day I got fever and I got, got into the hospital. And they say it's not COVID-19. It was just some, some, some bad case of... Uh, I, I, they ha I had tested twice, I had been tested twice, uh -huh. and I'm, it was negative all, all the times. So well, whatever it was, you look good now, so that's the important I, I hope so, so, and, and just frankly speaking, I hope it was, it was. <laughs> so to your well, I really, I really thinking to take another test, like, which shows in, um, in retrospective, if you had it or not, because those tests are really not trustworthy to some extent so it just could be could be that so it, it, it took me four days in the hospital like this like you, you saw in the pictures and then i got better yeah. and, and hopefully continue be you <laughs> now there is a question and i'm not sure if it's an invitation or a question from professor Risia charles so she's an old friend of mine i don't know if Risia, we probably have known each other for like 10 years at least if not more so Risia is in um, Grenada, in the Caribbean region. Uh, so I've seen some photos of the places where she lives. I mean, like we're talking about like some serious paradise on earth. And so the question she has is Caribbean travel, question mark, any future plans, question mark. So I'm not sure if that can be read as an invitation, but yeah, have you been to the Caribbean region? Uh, not yet. So in, 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 my, uh, in my head, I, I think the best way, there are two ways to see Caribbeans. The, one it, it, by boat and and by plane by plane it's very very expensive to get everywhere but by boat but by boat i mean yacht so actually i i, I took a course of sk skipper course so i have a license for um skipper license so i can um ah so you can actually ah, okay yeah i can actually yeah, I have to, to do some training and whatever, but in my head, I think I should uh, do it on yacht somehow. So I, I haven't figured it out yet. You got the license, now you have to find the boats. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a long, long term project. Is so like probably something's going to. Is there gonna like a market like you can rent a car? Can you rent a yacht? I mean, like. Does it yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it, it's all possible. But the other thing is, you have to have time. It's, it, it takes, the problem, uh, in my case, I work and work and travel, you know. <laughs> not, not, not that program, but, but I work uh, remotely. So when I travel, I do work. It's not like just, I, it, sometimes it's hard, you know. It's, sometimes it's very hard. To, because there's so many interesting places and you have to somehow manage your, make your work done and, and visit some places. Sometimes it's, you just, Sometimes you sacrifice sleep, sometimes you sacrifice money because of the work, yeah. so, and whatever. But here for Caribbeans, you have to, I have to have some time window, which I don't have right now. Yeah. So because on Yacht, it's, for me, it's impossible to, to work. Yeah. So if it's, usually there is no uh, uh, cell phone, sometimes there, there are cell, cell phones, but I cannot work on, on the waves. So it's for me, it's impossible. So I need to I post, postpone it to to the future. So the thing is, there are many, many, many things to do, and I I'd love to. I will, and I and I, I'm sure I will go there. 
Rishi, I see you have some useful advice on travel to, Carib to the Caribbean region, so I'm not sure if you have your video and microphone if you want to share with us. And while, while the video is streaming in, so yes, she confirms that travel by air is extremely expensive, and then by boat is the best way to go. Uh, the, uh, plus it allows you to stop uh, and visit all those uninhibited islands, and I assume that's, that's the real places you want to go to. I've been there a couple of times, but um, on a cruise ship, and so that's exactly you know, the cruise is another option. Which yeah, I, I the problem is so that you take you only to the like the most touristy places. Yes, yes, that's that's the problem of the, of the you don't like a, you know, like really, a, but but still, it's, it's the option. It's it, and and it's okay. Yeah, so it's a little bit different, and uh, so and you kind of get to the you know like main places. You can't really go much, you know. Uh, further. Yeah, that, that that's that's the thing. I, and I like to, to go again for the exculture students. The good thing is that um, the plan is to have uh, one of the next exculture symposia in the Caribbean. So, as you know, this year we were supposed to go to Singapore, but because of the COVID 19, we had to oh. reschedule. And so, we'll see, we'll try to do it next year. But now, at the same time, we're making arrangements. Um, one, uh, Reese's University was, uh, you know, volunteered to host us, and, you know, we still have to work on some administrative stuff, but maybe it will be possible to do it in one of the coming years. But another plan we have is in collaboration with the Royal Caribbean. So the plan is that we will start in Miami, have two, three days uh, of the business program in Miami, and we'll visit the usual places like the Miami uh, Cargo Port and the Cruise Port and the Miami International Airport and the Hard Rock Art you know, um, posts uh, of a few years ago. Then get on a cruise ship and then go to one of the islands uh, somewhere, you know, like Bahamas or, or you know, one of those regions. And then, as always, spend then a couple of days on the island and then, you know, go back to Miami. And so this way, again, first, if you would like to explore the region more, uh, there are lots of cheap flights from Miami to specific, uh, specific destinations in the Caribbean region. Again, you cannot hop from one island to another, but you can always get very good price to one of the islands. Again, be it Grenada or Trinidad or Tobago, and you know, explore that place. Or, speaking of, yeah. Go speaking ahead. of the boat, can I share uh, just yeah. just a few few pictures for you? Uh, so uh, last year, uh, my uh, some of my my friends invited me to participate in one project. Um, it was um, it, it let's say it was in, in one adventure. Oh, that's a <laughs> yeah raft. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a floating raft. We we built it. We we had uh, three nautic miles to uh, over the sea to cross. So it's uh, <laughs> like it's like paddles or what? Like like I don't. No know. no 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 no. It was smart smart. You you can see them. Oh, you have uh, an engine, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have engine. Uh, just let me. Like, can you do that? Yeah, actually, we did it. We did it. They didn't have a problem with that. So actually, we had to uh, register our, our vessel it, it, to some uh, registry, but you know we didn't do that, and it's obvious that there is obvious reason. If we have called it and told them we, we want to go by by by, by raft, <laughs> they say we'll say what. <laughs> Yeah. So I, we I have to go <clears throat> rafting, but uh, again, like uh, on a river where you have the current and you just basically. Oh, it's the sea. So it's, it's not open sea. You can see there is a uh, small semi semi. Um, it's like arrow, strelka. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How it's called in English? The, the, like this arrow, yeah. Arrow, semi, semi semi island arrow. So between mainland and 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 and. Oh, you mean the idea like like a like a peninsula. Like peninsula, but this the very narrow peninsula, long, very, very narrow peninsula. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so where is it? The black, the black Sea, or what is it? Yeah, it's 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 Black Sea, and uh, that's actually a very comfortable raft. You know, the ones I've used are much smaller, and you usually get wet, and you know. Like next, this is what happened next morning. So it's not that comfortable. We had to you fix it. An air or something. So. So we we had um, this uh, air balloons from um, what, what? Oh. like one of those like inflatable rafts. Yeah, in, no, not raft, but yeah, yeah. Let's call it raft. Uh, it's um, with the um, I forgot the word. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You you'll see. So that, that that's you see those balloons from um, 
So those are inflatable. That's not metal. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're inflatable. We build, we build the platform upon upon them, <laughs> and we we got holes in it. And the, the hard part, this uh, this wood, it weight a, a lot. Yeah, it's not yeah. on the water. You cannot just put it. Mm, you cannot do anything. So what we have decided, we just decided to cut third of our raft <laughs> because uh, uh, just to be able to lift it. Just so to you lost some of your real estate because yeah, it looks like you started with like twenty square meters or something like that, twenty five. Yes. And, yes. and later you, <laughs> yeah. it's much smaller now. You can see. <laughs> it's well, still quite an adventure. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, this is my second <laughs> second one. Yeah, that's, yeah. We had fun, you know, but it we but speaking about safety, we have ja uh, safety jackets, we had radio, and we had license <laughs> for <laughs> for this vessel. Kind of. You were with like eight people or something like that, six. Yeah, 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 seven. Seven. Yeah. And, oh, interesting. No, oh, this is oh, our neighbors. Yeah. So this kind of kind of open sea, not 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 really open sea, but it was was sea three nautic miles of the sea. So just it was it was fun, you know, going. Yeah, something to remember. All right. Well, any last uh, tip, advice uh, for the for the students watching here or who will watch the recording? So I would uh, travel the world. So what's the next step then? Uh, I don't know. So just let's just. Uh, I have a lot of work these days, fortunately or for, probably fortunately. So I'll put my effort in there. Then I'll travel in in Ukraine. So, but I think you'll see. I, I don't have plans, but I'm sure I'll I'll, I'll continue. So it's it's travel bug. You cannot just ignore it. So so I frankly I don't have plans. Huge yeah, plans this summer, I assume the bad news is that uh, much of the travel, I mean, much of the, you know, like, um, uh, there are still a lot of restrictions on travel. On the other and hand, if somebody dares to go somewhere this summer, I suppose, you know, all the touristy places will be empty. Uh, it's probably going to be easier to get some good deals on the hotels. I assume they will be pr primarily empty. So it may be actually a good time to go if you're not afraid of the, of the virus. And uh, I, I, I look at, at this a little bit differently. Um, I think now it's a good time actually become a kind of, let's say, real travelers, like uh, great travelers of the past. So now you have a lot of restrictions, a lot of, uh, let's say, um, issues, a lot of problems, and you have to figure it out. So if you travel, you, you are kind of real traveler you know because uh, buy, buy, <laughs> cheap tickets are easy you know so just low cost it's easy but try to travel now it's it makes you real traveler so just consider that that so if, if you can make it now it you're probably your re real one yeah the, the new york test if you can make it in new york you can make it anywhere if you can if you can travel in 2020 you can travel anywhere anytime <laughs> So, uh, yeah. and, and one more thing I probably uh, want to tell is just how I think my travel, uh, how I think, so the travel is, is kind of challenge. So challenge yourself, uh, imagine kind of project or whatever. So for example, in, 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 in Jerusalem, I saw this hydrants, this yellow metal thing, um, probably. And, and I imagine some, some project, I find them and I put them into some pictures. I'll show you later. But the, uh, invent meaning for your, for, your, for your travels. It makes it much more fun. So if you, like, like, I don't know, it, it could be whatever thing. So just imagine and build and start project. So it makes, then it makes, make a research, make training, preparate, validate your hypothesis, ideas, uh, way of traveling, validate your cost spending, uh, be ready to abort missions, stop to, to, to regroup to whatever. And that way it's gonna, you'll have much more fun than just uh, trying to catch some deals or whatever. Yeah, keep your mind open and uh, yeah, and see what comes your way. 
Well, we'll see how things go this summer. As I said, you know, I had a lot of travel plans, uh, lots of conferences, lots of countries, and then in the end, we had to cancel pretty much all of it. All yeah, I, I, I had to. Yeah. But yeah, it gives us a little bit more time to catch up on work and then maybe, you know, prepare for the next year. So no big deal. All right. Well, thank you so much for being our guest here, for sharing your stories and adventures and tips and uh, advice. And uh, um, have, hopefully, you know, we'll see more photos from exotic locations uh, on your Facebook. And I think in the invitation, I did share your Facebook uh, profile. So uh, I recommend everybody to subscribe. Sometimes you're welcome to subscribe. Some unusual friend, friend request, whatever. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Good luck in your future uh, endeavors and trips. And uh, yeah, looking forward thank to Thank you for talking. having me here. It was a pleasure to talk to you guys. Everyone. Bye bye.